Hi everybody, this is Peter Schiff. This is Friday, August 14th, 2009. This is the first video blog of the week. I've been kind of on semi-vacation. Um, we've got some economic data that came out during the week. Yesterday we got retail sales, which uh, got people nervous because we posted the first decline, I think, in a few months. Now, of course, declining retail sales are a good thing. I mean, this is part of the cure. Uh, the country is in trouble because we have too much debt. Uh, the solution is that Americans uh, rebuild their savings, pay off some debt. We can't do that unless we stop shopping. Uh, you know, so in order to repair the damage that's been done to our economy, uh, you know, we need retail sales to decline. Now, the fact that this is bad for the retailers, well, I mean, that's an unfortunate consequence. But remember, the retailers benefited uh, during the boom as Americans were you know, borrowing against their homes and spending like there was no tomorrow, uh, they were racking up a lot of retail sales. And so they made a lot of money during the boom. They're going to have to suffer uh, during the bust. Uh, but we can't try to continue uh, this bad economics. We can't try to encourage Americans to take on more debt so they can keep shopping just so we can temporarily keep people employed in, in the retail sector. Uh, unfortunately, those people, many people are going to have to lose those jobs and they're going to have to find more productive jobs someplace else because the consequences to, for society uh, to maintaining them employed in a non-productive manner are going to be disastrous, not only for society in general, but in the long run for these very individuals. Uh, if they simply can make the transition into more viable employment, everybody would benefit. But of course, the government is probably going to try to pursue uh, monetary and fiscal policy uh, to get those Americans back in the malls, back in the auto showrooms, spending more money they don't have and digging this economy into an even deeper ditch. Also, we've got some uh, economic data today on the CPI, on inflation. Uh, it showed no change, I think, in the month of July. Anybody drawing false conclusions that the inflation outlook is benign based on these government numbers is wrong. And anybody who is making investment decisions, if people are going out there and buying long-term U.S. government bonds because they're convinced there's no inflation, they're making a grave mistake. You can't simply look in the rearview mirror, take you know, July's numbers and, and draw uh, inferences uh, that there's no inflation. You've got to be worried about July 2010, July 2015, you know, or 2020, especially if you're buying long-term government bonds. And I think over the long term, based on the inflation that's already in the pipeline, based on all the money they've already printed and all the money they're going to print, inflation is going to be a huge problem. And people have to understand that and look beyond uh, these government numbers. You know, also this week we had the Fed meet. Uh, ben Bernanke made a statement basically saying that the economy is improving, uh, but that the Fed is on hold. They're likely to maintain these low interest rates for an extended period of time, but that at some point they, they hinted that the, government, the Fed would stop purchasing government bonds. Now, of course, this is all a lie. They're not going to stop buying. They are the main buyer. They're going to keep on buying to try to maintain artificially low interest rates. And the fact that they're going to keep interest rates on hold, uh, which is at practically zero for an extended period of time, that's the same mistake that his predecessor, Alan Greenspan, made uh, in keeping rates at 1% for an extended period of time. Well, they're lower than that now, and so we're making the same mistake, only we're making it on a, on a, bigger, on a bigger scale. Uh, also in the markets today, uh, you know, the dollar coming into the session was very weak. Uh, I looked at the New Zealand dollar, for example, which made a new 52-week uh, high this morning. It was up considerably, almost 2%. Then when the U.S. market rolled over, the Dow was down over 100 points intraday. I think it finished down about 80 or so. But that actually turned the situation around. The dollar recouped and actually rose uh, to, to close slightly positive on the day. Gold surrenders at its early morning gains and, and closed down on the day. We're back in that pattern where the minute U.S. stocks are weak, you get that flight to the dollar, uh, flight to treasuries, sell, you know, get rid of foreign currency, sell gold. Oil was down about three bucks. Ultimately, I think this trade is going to come to an end. The idea that the U.S. stock market going down is bad for every asset and good for the dollar, I think, is going to come to an end. But apparently, it's still here. But if you look at the progress that foreign stock markets have made over the last several weeks, it's pretty substantial. Whereas the U.S. stock market, again, has barely, has barely moved. 
You know, speaking of, um, you know, investment performance and relative performance and my, you know, track record or lack of a track record, I happened to notice today uh, on the blogs and just searching my name to see what was written about me, a left-wing blog trying to, uh, you know, make a political hay uh, from the fact that my theoretic investment track record is lousy, pointing out that my clients have lost their shirts, that anybody who followed my investment advice is basically broke. And of course, these aren't true statements, but they're going to make them. They're going to make them based on a lot of untrue uh, statements that have been made about me by other investment professionals who have written things that are not necessarily true, but who are trying to make a name for themselves, who are trying to promote their own businesses. But now my political critics are apparently trying to use my poor investment track record that really doesn't exist against me to try to question my competence. Here I am saying I know how to solve our nation's economic problems. Well, I couldn't solve the problems for my own clients. My clients you know, uh, were destroyed, uh, which of course is not true. I'll actually read one of the quotes from this left-wing blog. This is what they say. Had you listened to Peter in 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, or even three quarters of 2007, you lost your shirt. Had you placed bets on Schiff's market calls, you lost everything you wagered. Now, of course, all this is false. Now, why is this particular blogger saying that if you followed my advice in all those years, you lost your shirts? Well, He's looking at the fact that I said that investors should stay out of U.S. stocks in 2002 through 2007. Well, maybe if you were shorted U.S. stocks during all those years, yes, maybe you would have lost your shirt. But I didn't recommend that. What was I recommending during those years? I was recommending that people buy foreign stocks. I was recommending that people buy commodities, that people buy oil, that people buy precious metals. So certainly people who followed that advice during those years didn't lose their shirts. In fact, they did a lot better than people who were in the U.S. stock market. Now, of course, most of my clients lost money in 2008, just like everybody lost money in 2008 who was long anything. The only way you made money in 2008 was if you were short. But I'm not a short seller. I, I'm a buy and hold value investor. And so most of my clients' accounts were down in 2008, just like everybody else's accounts. 2009, of course, my accounts did, you know, have done very, very well in general. But I can't really respond to a lot of these critics because I am not a money manager. I don't have an investment track record. That might change. I just recently launched a registered investment advisory that will have a track record and a mutual fund, the first Euro Pacific Capital Mutual Fund, a China fund, launched this week. So in the future, that mutual fund will have a track record. But there is no track record for my brokerage firm clients because they're, they're accounts. I don't manage them. I don't have discretion. And, and they're, all, they're all different. But the allegations that people who followed my advice have been wiped out are just simply false. I mean, if you simply look at the facts of how commodities and foreign stocks have done, they've done very well. I pointed out on one of these blogs earlier that even though the Hang Seng Index was down 70% in 2008, and of course many of my clients own stocks that trade on the Hang Seng, even though they were down 70% in 2008, over the past six years, which includes 2008, I think the Hang Seng Index returned better than 30% per year, which is 10 times the return on the U.S. stock market. Uh, so, you know, people who follow my advice, I mean, who bought foreign stocks, who bought commodities, who bought uh, precious metals, while they might have done poorly in 2008, they clearly haven't done poorly over the long term, even though there's a lot of information on the Internet that alleges otherwise. And, you know, there's very little I can do about it. Uh, because there's no way to, to prove uh, that, you know, that my clients have done well uh, because I don't have a track record and there are FINRA rules that limit what I can say with respect to performance of brokerage accounts. But we'll see what happens politically because of my Senate run. And, you know, getting to my Senate run, and I think that's the inspiration for this attack, um, I'm probably a couple of weeks away from making an announcement. I am very strongly leaning in favor of running, as I've said, particularly considering how well the fundraising has gone. We've now raised about $875,000 on the uh, uh, a shift for Senate website. I certainly would love to have over a million dollars raised uh, by, uh, by, the end, uh, by the next couple of weeks by my announcement, if I make one. 
Uh, so certainly if you've already contributed, maybe you can do a little bit more or you can suggest or urge your friends to make a contribution so we can get over a million and then I can really make an announcement with a major, major bank. Anyway, thanks a lot, everybody. That's it for today.